And so you complete medical school and... Uh, yes. After five, six uh, years and then... I complete medical school. Mm -hmm. Okay, five years. Mm -hmm. And then you do one year internship. Mm -hmm. So I did internship in Mulago, the National Referral Hospital. That's okay. where the medical school was. Right. And I did um, uh, internal medicine mm -hmm. and obstetrics and gynecology. Okay. So I think maybe... So internal medicine, what does it... What does it so entail? this is really like um, things that affect adults mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. So like... Um, infectious diseases so people the people you the kind of patients you would see are people with malaria mm. people with pneumonia mm. hiv was coming up at that time mm. it was becoming a thing mm -hmm. uh, people with tb mm. and then of course now the other things diabetes mm. um, so those things mm -hmm. that's what we all right uh, was within the internal, internal medicine. medicine yeah and then ob, 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 ob mm. yeah mm. and i think my uh, maybe my consciousness mm -hmm. as a doctor mm. and my consciousness maybe that as a public health practitioner mm -hmm. I think I was pricked during the internship mm -hmm. because there was so much wrong with the system. Mm -hmm. But as an intern, you are like, um, you know, at the bottom mm. of the food chain. Mm. So you had almost no power, you mm -hmm. had no influence. Mm. You just saw things that you knew were wrong, but mm. felt powerless. What were do. some of those things? Um, uh, a lot of things were wrong. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are the systemic things, like mm -hmm. the healthcare system mm -hmm. was struggling. Mm. So you're working in a, in a, in a, um, in this national referral hospital mm -hmm. and you're able to know what somebody's problem is mm -hmm. but 90 percent of the time the treatment well. is not available right. so you, have, you still write a prescription and somebody mm. has to go outside outside and buy mm. and buy the mm. the medicine mm. if they can afford it if mm. they can't mm. then you know this person needs this struggle. medicine yeah but the medicine is not there and mm. sometimes you could watch them like mm. go downhill mm. and you could tell they're going to die mm. because somebody can't afford medicine mm. you know what the problem is but mm. you can't solve it mm. because there's something that is outside your mm. control mm. so that was something which was sort of external mm. that's how the system was set up mm. but then there were internal things mm -hmm. really um mm. within the hospital itself mm. as a, there were some consultants that we saw like once in a term mm -hmm. and yet they were supposed to be teaching us mm. so they were just not there they, they were just not there so uh, you, once in a while you see oh this professor is around and then you all congregate around this person mm. and the person is asking questions and, mm. and you're like no this is not right this person is supposed to be teaching us so mm. how can they come once in a term mm. when maybe they should be coming every week mm. because they were up, out there doing private practice practice mm -hmm. so you could you could see that and you say this is not mm. right but okay what are you supposed to do mm. this person is the one who's going to be sitting in your exam mm. at some point so you have to be nice mm. So that you observe those things, mm. but you feel like there's not much you can do That's about sad. it. Yeah, but then the healthcare then. system itself. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think in OBGYN, mm -hmm. OBGYN mm -hmm. when I was doing my internship. Mm. So I'll talk about my first month. Mm -hmm. You you spend the whole day working as an intern, mm -hmm. eight to five, mm. in, a, in a in a ward. There mm. were three wards. Yeah. So you'd be allocated a ward. Yeah. And then every day one word was on call. Okay. Meaning you're the one manning the emergency um there were two emergency departments for yeah. BGYN. Mm -hmm. One was for labor, mm -hmm. so you're either you're in the labor ward mm. and then the other one was what they called gynecological emergencies. So people who are having miscarriages, mm. people who are having other, you know, emergencies. Mm -hmm. So when you're an intern, mm -hmm. you spend the day eight to five mm -hmm. on a ward. Mm -hmm. So you do ward rounds, mm -hmm. you see patients, mm -hmm. you send them for investigation, you diagnose, you mm -hmm. do small procedures. Mm -hmm. Then at five o'clock, mm -hmm. you don't go home, mm -hmm. you cross over to the emergency oh, department. Really? To be on call the whole night. It was five to eight okay. a.m. What? Yes. And at eight a.m. the next day, you would walk back to your ward and work until five, then you'd sleep. <laughs> because now another ward would be on call, so it wouldn't be you. So you'd sleep. You would literally work like, I don't know how many hours ago. That's eight to five, eight, uh, 24 hours. Tw that's not not 20, no, almost six, 36 hours. That's and crazy. Then, yeah. Now, that wasn't the worst of it. No, but uh, <clears throat> you can even handle that? Uh, yes, I, I mean, you had no choice. If you're an intern, if you don't do things and things go wrong, then of course you will fail your internship. Oh. And no one wants to fail their internship and do that same thing for another six months. Oh. So you did everything to... Um, to do that but that wasn't the worst so my first experience in labor hmm. ward 
you show up at five o'clock mm. you've been working the whole day mm. and by the time you arrive there's like a long line of women in various stages of labor mm. that uh, you everyone is waiting for you because you're the doctor on yeah. call yeah and so you start doing the what you call the clacking mm -hmm. it's the same thing take history mm. examine mm. and then say okay this one mm. uh, maybe they should go back to the ward mm. Uh, this one is not in labor mm. this one is in labor mm. there are different stages of labor mm. and then of course there are people with labor complications mm. people with high blood pressure people with twins yeah. people with uh, maybe severe anemia people yeah. with fever yeah. so you would um, uh, triage people and say okay normal labor yeah. not normal and then yeah, they go into different sections yeah and then you're supposed to um, make sure that all of them have you know deliver safely mm -hmm. uh, both mother and baby are safe mm. So what was wrong? As I said, those are the systemic issues. As I said, you start observing them mm, mm. and you feel they're, powerless. They, but also and they prick you hard. They prick you hard. Yeah. So when you go as an intern doctor, they are midwives mm -hmm. who are employed right. to work in those departments. Yeah. I think at that time it was rumored <laughs> that if you're a, if you're a midwife, you could bribe to be allocated night duty so that you can come and rest. And then during the day you go and work in a private mm. clinic so it was a privilege to be allocated night duty because when you came you could sleep mm. now this is labor ward in a national referral hospital um we, whereby by 7 pm there are about 15 women in different stages of labor and the women keep coming they keep coming until about 10. yeah so by 10 you've admitted about 30 women and the midwives who have come to work with you i've come to sleep have come to sleep <laughs> my hairs are raising <laughs> what and i don't know whether it still happens if it does um i wouldn't be surprised that's how broken our healthcare systems are but honestly for me it was shocking like you're there as a doctor your role was to clerk and make a diagnosis normal labor was supposed to be monitored by the midwives even the deliveries were supposed to be conducted by the midwives and then during the monitoring, if something goes wrong, then they would shift the women to the section of the complicated labor, which mm. now was my responsibility yeah. as, a, as an intern, as an intern on, yeah. on call. Yeah. So the first night was women screaming. In Uganda, they say Musawo, which is Pain. Musawo is like uh, Musawo is Help doctor me. is like health worker. Yeah. So it could be the midwife, it could be doctor. Mm. Women screaming the whole night, Musawo, Musawo. And I would I, I spent the whole night running from this woman and delivered yeah. this woman put up a drip i don't know do what send this to the theater go to theater you know do c-section come back i spent the whole night literally on my feet running the whole night until six o'clock in the morning and um, i have another memory of me coming from theater at around 5 a.m exhausted and still going back because i knew there were other women with mm. high blood pressure with this so i did it about three times and then I asked my colleagues, is this how internship is in labor ward? And then they told me, say, you know, your job as a doctor is to diagnose and decide who's in normal labor and who's not in normal labor. Now, after diagnosis, your job is to look after those who are not in normal labor. Normal labor is not your job. So these midwives who are there, it's them to make sure that those women who come will have live babies and that the women, the women will be alive themselves. And I said, okay, I said, I've, I've done this like th three times in a maybe two week period. And I didn't feel like I could function as a human being. Of course not. So I said, okay, so this is how it works. So it, I, I became the doctor who clerks and you make um, the decision, this is normal, this is not normal. And then as long as the non-normal labor <laughs> cases were taken care of, mm. like normal labor was not my problem. <clears throat> But then the worst thing was in the morning, um, the, now the consultant would come. Yeah. Because as I've said, it was different wards which were on call. So mm. if I mean, I, there was, it was fifth floor, 5A, 5B, 5C. Mm -hmm. So the whole team on 5A mm. would come now to do the post admission round mm. and then hand over to mm. the team which was going to do mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the emergency for the, you know, during the day. Mm. So you go in the normal labor section of the of the hospital and you find women fast asleep they came in labor and labor stopped because they were not monitored 
the uterus gets tired. So when the uterus gets tired, it just stops contracting. So women would come in labor screaming, and then some, if they are lucky, the labor would just stop because the uterus is tired and they, they don't have enough Goodness. glucose. And you find women fast asleep. Goodness. It's, if they I are mean, lucky, it's life threatening even. If they are lucky, their babies are fine. But many times the babies are not fine. Oh my goodness. So the, the consultant comes and is checking. Oh, fetal distress. This one, emergency section. Emergency, every single person, emergency section. And no anger, like no consequence. How did we get here? If you check those women's files, every single file, perhaps the last entry was my clerking. There was no, no monitoring. One no one else monitored the women. No one else did anything the whole night. But then there was no anger. There was no consequence. There was no punishment. The consultant would come and say, C-section, this one uh, put up a drip so that we can restart labor. That is um, This one we wrong. need... Um, there's something they call vacuum extraction. We need vacuum extraction for this one. This one, for the mama, your baby is dead. So we're just going to put up a drip and the baby will oh, come out. Oh, no. I was like, what? Like, how can you be a professor of obstetrics? No, obviously. How can you be this senior consultant of obstetrics and you come in a hospital and you find this has happened on your watch? This is your shift, your hospital, I mean, your ward shift. And you don't feel any kind of that you need to do something about it. And then for me as an intern, I expected like the first night they would be like heads would roll and no heads rolled. And then it went on and on. I was like, oh, okay, so this is how. This is order. This is how the system mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. But many times, you know, later when I was a mother, I would ask myself, can you imagine? Like somebody was pregnant, nine months, they went for antenatal, they're excited, they did shopping for the baby. Baby and, shower, and this yeah, is what it is. And then they to. come and they go home with a dead baby because the midwife was system. because the midwife was sleeping. Because it was a privilege for her to work at night. And she had probably bribed someone for that privilege. And for them, I don't know whether it, uh, they ever thought about these women that went home or those that got C-section that they didn't need, but yeah. ended up in C-section because the babies were distressed or tired. Because it changes their because it, life. Because it changes their life. But that thereafter. was the system. So that, as I said, it was um, difficult operating in that kind of system oh. where you're just there and you're a small, tiny little wheel. Yeah. You know, in the cog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you just did, and you feel Whoa. like I need to survive this, yeah, and get out of here for your internship. <laughs> for my internship, and I don't want to do six months more of this <sighs> because of um, and that's you're saying that's the national hospital that was the national river hospital. Whoa, as I've said, I don't know how things are right now, yeah, yeah. I've not been there for yeah. long, yeah, but um. It's something and that, most national referral hospitals. I mean, that's that's the story. Yep, yeah, mm. yeah. But I think, how does that happen? Mm. Maybe that is how you have to ask yourself. How how exactly. broken can a system be? Yeah, to get that there. there, that you get there, mm. and there are no consequences mm. really for such uh, ne negligence. Yeah, ne negligent negligence, behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, as I said, that's when I think my conscience was being pricked, pricked. and said, "This is not right." Yeah. And as a doctor, you're limited by the moment. Like yeah. you're there to deliver yeah. a woman. Yeah. You're there to yeah. maybe prescribe. It messes you up. It messes you up. Yeah. But really, what is more important is that mm. the system works. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You want the system to work better. You want better. the system to work better. You want to feel your contrib <laughs> you're contributing to a thriving environment for, for better health care yeah. for all. For everyone. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter how good you are as a doctor that yeah. it doesn't really matter in it the doesn't. end that baby yeah. will die yeah because somebody was given a privilege yeah. to sleep that is so wrong um yes that is so wrong. <laughs> this will never leave me <laughs> that, that, <laughs> um oh. yeah i mean there are many there are many moments when i look back and I'm like wow yeah and um like seeing the urgency oh emergency section this baby very severe speed of distress oh Bed number, did I say bed number seven? No, no, no. This baby is more distressed. Let's do number eight first. And it's the same, it's one theater. And maybe at most there are two doctors who can do C-sections. So they are being told there's a woman coming, say, no, 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 actually the other baby is worse. So let's do, let's do somebody else first. And um, yeah, anyway, 
as you said it messes you up oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness so you did that but for six I months i did that for six months yes yeah. i did that for six months mm. and i survived oh, finished observing and, and feeling horrible most of the time yeah and also feeling like um what kind of system is that where really there's no accountability mm. i think that was the most yeah. Yeah. striking thing mm. so an so, advocacy <clears throat> something is being started to get planted yes uh, yeah starting to get planted yeah. yeah true yeah okay yeah all right <laughs> so what what do you do with all of that and where do you go next um so i finished internship mm-hmm. thank god and then <laughs> thank god um, yes. i was posted to one of the most unlikely places 